so today I'm gonna to take you through what is currently in my everyday makeup bag. This is the one, currently empty because everything is out in front of me. Now, I don't currently have a dressing table in the bedroom, so what I tend to do is go to my big makeup setup and then like once a week just have a little like rotation, open all the drawers, work out what I wanna put in kind of my everyday makeup bag, and then every day I just tend to do my makeup according to what is in the bag, which keeps things nice and simple. And right now I'm loving a really like earthy, kind of sepia toned makeup, very matte, with a matte eye and then a matte lip. So lots of things I've been talking about recently, but I'm gonna throw them all on my face. Apologies if the lighting is a bit on and off, the sun just can't make out its mine, so I'm constantly trying <laughs> to readjust things. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna get started with base. So right now I've got two foundations in there, and the first one is the Chanel Vitalimia Aqua Foundation. This is in the shade B20. I kind of flip between B10 and B20, and right now I'm just fancying more of like a sun-kissed summer look. I'm like, yes, come on, spring. <laughs> Time to get a bit of tan back on. So I've been using this quite a lot, but today I'm gonna use a mixture of things, and it is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. I have this in the shade Fair, and then I'm gonna mix that with a dollop of the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I just find this to be the perfect, perfect foundation blend right now. You get the coverage from the CC cream. This is not, don't think of this as like a CC BB tinted moisturizer thing. This thing packs a serious punch in the pigment department, but then the Becca just gives it a nice dewy glow, and I take that on the Zoeva 140 buffer brush, so take a dollop of each, and this is what I've been using for the last couple of weeks. I just find it blends in really quickly, nice and easy to apply but provides a nice amount of coverage for every day without looking too like mask-like. For concealer, I'm still using my Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer in the shade Light Warm, and I must admit, I'm just getting a bit bored of this. I feel like this is the only concealer really that I've used for like, when did I pick this up? July? It's been a long time. It's still going strong. I'm definitely getting to the bottom <laughs> of the tube, but I'm feeling like it's drying out a little bit and maybe it's time to get a different concealer. So if anyone has any concealer recommendations, then do pop them below, but I'm just popping that on any areas of redness, any blemishes that I've got, and then just blending it in with a super, super, super damp beauty blender, which is my favorite way to apply it right now. I either use this or I use the MAC. Is this the 188 brush? This is really good for blending in as well. Now for like an everyday kind of no makeup makeup, I would probably just leave it there, pop on a bit of mascara and a bit of lip gloss and be done. But I feel like going all out today, so I'm gonna pop on a powder. And for that, I've gone back to my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. And I just take kind of a mixture of these two, which is dim light and incandescent light on a Bobbi Brown sheer powder brush. Just give that a little dust off, make sure there's nothing on it right now. Just to kind of set things in a really light and subtle way. It definitely doesn't look too matte when you use this. I have been using my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural again recently, and I just, I love that powder, but I've got it in medium and it is probably a bit too dark for me right now. So I probably should pick that up in a different shade. Now for contour, I'm still using my Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in the shade Medium, but I have a new one. I picked this up from Cult Beauty recently, and I will admit that I still have kept my old one that has like a tiny, tiny amount left in it, because I feel like the colour is slightly different. It's probably down to the fact that I've had my old one for like two or three years, and the colour's just a bit off, but I still like the shade of this. It's very cool and kind of grey toned. So I just take a tiny bit of that under my cheekbones on my Charlotte Tilbury powder and sculpt brush. I like to go over with a beauty blender after I've done my contouring just to make sure that it isn't too intense. It always looks so crazy on the little screen that I can see. But then when I go to edit, I'm like, oh, it didn't look, it didn't look that bad. But on there, it looks like two brown stripes on the side of my face. Now for cheeks, I've really gone back to a few old favourites, and the first one is from Makeup Forever, and this is their Pro Bronze Fusion in the shade M20, and I just take that on a MAC 187 brush, give it a little dust, and then just taking that kind of semi all over, mostly on the cheeks, but kind of on the forehead, down the centre of my face and also onto my neck as well. I just find the shade of this so flattering. It's not orangey at all, it's quite like olive in undertones, so whenever I'm feeling like I need to look a little bit more sun-kissed, I crack this out. Just don't compare my hand to my face. Ooh, that's never a good, that's never a good thing. I feel like I need a little bit of blush today, so I'm gonna use the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in the shade Exposed, again on that Bobbi Brown Sheer Powder Brush. A tiny, 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 tiny amount. I feel like this is a really pretty tawny kind of pink, so it goes really nicely with like the matte eyes, and then like a bit of a 
pinky brown lip. This is a really good, it's just a good blush for everything really, even with like a berry lip, a red lip. If you haven't tried this blush or something similar, I would highly recommend this colour. Doesn't look much in the pan, it never looks like particularly flattering or anything in the pan, but on the cheeks. Lovely. For my highlight, I'm going in with the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in Moonstone, and I'm just taking that again on the Charlotte Tilbury Powder and Sculpt brush, and I'm just tapping off the excess, and then I'm just going to apply that over the tops of my cheeks. And I had an email the other day from one of you, and you were asking whether I prefer Champagne Pop or Moonstone. Now, I personally prefer Moonstone because I'm quite pale. I feel like Champagne Pop is probably a bit more flattering on like medium to tan and darker skin tones. So that one I tend to use more in the summer. But for me, Moonstone I use all year round, and I just, oh, I love it, I literally like, yeah, let's just put this everywhere. Yeah, basically just applying it like a face powder. <laughs> for brows, there's no change, I'm just going to use my Bobbi Brown Perfectly Defined Longwear Brow Pencil in the shade Grey, and then go over the top of it with my NYX Tinted Brow Mascara in the shade Brunette. Very easy, I love that brow mascara, I tend to use that most days. I don't really bother too much with this step, I tend to just go in, give them a quick little brush and then pop that brown mascara on and it just keeps them nice and in place instead of going crazy in the wind. <laughs> I'm just going to prime my eyelids with the Urban Decay Primer Potion, a tiny little amount is all you need for this, and then just dabbing that in with my fingers. If I apply a little bit too much here, I dab over the top with my Beauty Blender just to get off any excess. So the eye look that I'm going to do today is very similar to the one I did in my date night get ready with me and it just revolves around the Bizarre Neutral Matte Eyeshadow Palette. I got this a long, long time ago, and I feel like I used it a bit, but then it just sort of gathered dust, I didn't really think about it too much. But recently, I got it out, it cost me an absolute bomb, so I'm like, I'm gonna get my use out of this one, and I've really, really been enjoying using it. There's some shades in here that I could just happily use every day for the rest of my life and be a happy bunny indeed. So I'm gonna take quite a big fluffy brush, this is the Ebelin. Can't remember the name of it, I'll pop a link to it down below. And I'm just gonna use a mixture of these two colors here, so the kind of orangey shade, and then more of like a biscuity color. Taking off the excess on the back of my hand and just applying this in my crease. Now this is quite an extra additional step, you don't have to do this, I just find that it makes the blending out of the next stage a little bit easier if there's something in the crease to like pre-soften it. Then I'm going to take some of this mid-tone brown shade on a MAC 242 brush. Now this shade is kind of just the most neutral, almost out of the palette. It's not really too warm and it's not really too cool and out of all of the colours in the palette is the one that I use the most because I think it just looks like a natural shadow on your eyes. It's almost like a contouring <laughs> colour for your eyelid. But I'm just popping that all over the lid. So I'm just going to take that same colour now on a MAC 242 brush, something a bit more like blendy and just taking that through the crease just to soften the edges. I find that this is the easiest way to get like quite a lot of pigment on the lid but then be able to blend it out in the crease. Now for liner I'm just going to take a bit of the H&M Colour Essence Eye Pencil in the shade Raw Umber. Completely love this, I think this is probably my favourite thing out of the whole H&M Beauty line. I think their eyeliners rock. I'm just going to take a very small amount of that on the real outer corner of my upper lash line. It's really hard to do while you're talking. I've ended up doing a bit of a mini wing with that, which was completely unintentional, but you know how eyeliner is. Sometimes it just has a real mind of its own. But onto mascara, and I am so excited because I've had a lash lift recently and the results are still there. They're still looking quite curled, still pretty permed, and it's like a month-ish on at the time of filming this video, and they're still going strong. Absolutely love them. But it means that, number one, I don't have to use eyelash curlers. Don't even need them anymore. Very exciting. And it also means I've been able to experiment with non-waterproof mascara formulas. So what I'm using at the moment is the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Major Volume Mascara. And I quite like it. I'm starting to realise that if you've got really curled eyelashes naturally, that you can basically use whatever mascara you want and they all look pretty darn good. So I'm just going to apply kind of an absolute shed load of this because I'm really enjoying having eyelashes that don't point down like elephant eyelashes. The only thing I'm finding about non-waterproof mascaras is that they're so smudgy. I completely have been spoiled by waterproof mascaras that don't like smudge or flake or anything like that. And I wore this to the gym the other day and came back looking like a drunk panda. It was not a good look. 
but in terms of volume it definitely delivers on that. <laughs> so finally we're on to lips, now I have two things currently in my makeup bag for that and the first thing is the Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector in the shade 07. I just think this is such a good like everyday lip colour, kind of day to day this is what I would reach for. But Feeling something a little bit different, feeling a little bit of colour today, so I'm going to go with the MAC lipstick in the shade Velvet Teddy. I mentioned this in a recent haul video, I just absolutely love this nude. It's like a brownie, pinky, terracotta kind of peach nude, which I feel is like very flattering for quite pale skin tones. This is going to be your like entry level brown lipstick right here, so... Let's do this. It's actually pretty creamy for a matte lipstick, so I don't feel the need to use any lip pencil or anything like that, or a lot, I just stick it on, boom, done. So that is the current contents of my makeup bag thrown on my face. It's all back in here, all repacked and ready to go. And if you'd like to see the last version that I did of this, which was maybe like two months or so ago, I will link that video here for you so you can see how things have changed. But thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you soon with a brand new video. Bye.